And we are underway on game two of the Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup week. We're kicking off this Wednesday, the 24th of January with the under-19 B girls final between Ulidia Integrated and Loretto of Stevens Green. It's Ross O'Donoghue with you on commentary. Delighted to be joined on co-commentary by Martin Conroy. Good morning, Martin. How are you doing, Ross? Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh, this really is an interesting matchup when you look at it, as much for the talent on the sidelines as it is for the talent on the court. When you look to Ulidia uh, Integrated, they're a team that have very much been here before uh, through the Maguire sisters, who will be front and centre for most of this game, numbers seven and eight. Uh, you're seeing number eight there in grey, Enya Maguire, her sister Erin is there, uh, coached, of course, by their dad, uh, Gareth. And ably assisted shall we say by the under 18 Ireland coach Pat O'Neill then you look to the Loretta Stevens green side and their moon tour is none other than Irish international star DCU Mercy Sarah Woods and you've already spotted one or two on Loretta Stevens green that we need to be keeping an eye out for today as well yeah I just talked to um, Sarah Chubb before the game and Sarah was talking about uh, Lauren Deva just to keep an eye out for her and also Laura Furlan who can shoot the ball really well uh, as we know the other side obviously Enya and um, Aaron Maguire uh, they combined for 64 what? points in the semi-final not a bad tally but it's Ashlyn Coase who gets things underway for Loretto nine minutes left in this first quarter it's 10 minute quarters at under 19 B level so it's something that we're really really excited to have a look at here today on the floor for Loretto, number 35 is Sirka McCall. Uh, also in there, number 22, Ashlyn Coast, the scorer of that first game. Number 79, Julie Donnelly. They must have 70 other eight basketballers chomping at the bit to get involved there. Including number 72 Laura Furlong either that or they just retire numbers really easily in Loretto yeah it, it's uh, <laughs> looking a bit more like an American football team at the moment than a basketball team I think at number 9 in there is Lauren Devitt that's her pulling up for the jumper and it's good it's a 4-0 lead for Loretto great start for them and look at the crowd they have in today admittedly they didn't have as far to travel as Ulidia but they will just ensure that the intensity and perhaps the tempo as well will stay right up all the way through the 40 minutes of basketball this afternoon for Ulidia integrated that was number seven Aaron Maguire giving it socks there and she'll go to the line for two number eight is Enya also on the floor at the moment Kaylee McLaughlin and number six Ten is Grace Kennedy, and Aaron gets a tap of well done. And also on the floor, I think that's uh, Ellie Gabby Watson as well. Yeah, these games normally take a couple of minutes to get settled in, just with nerves and stuff like that. So we should see a little bit better basketball maybe come the next three or four or five minutes. I think physically the team seem pretty evenly matched as well. Looks to be a little bit more reach on the Loretto side, particularly through at number 22 there, Ashlyn Coase. And that good discipline defence that Sarah Woods, the coach, is going to love to see. Arms out. And it's not so much... I mean, yes, it's effective on the defensive end, but it's also a statement of intent, isn't it? It's yeah. also saying we're here, we're disciplined, and you're not getting past us. Yeah, and she, she looks to have set up in a 3-2, which is going to force uh, Lydia to shoot from outside, um, try and stop the ball getting inside. But they've got some good outside shooters in, in both Aaron and Enya. So um, we'll see how that goes. That's the way to, to beat a, a zone, is to attack it like that. Great job. Man. Oh, good in transition here. Chance for Loretto is missed. That was Laura Furlong going close for the Dubliners. Again, lovely little hesitation step there from Enya. Just to get herself a little bit of room. She got fouled. She's going to have two free throws now. And Enya is going to be experienced on this floor absolutely in more ways than one. She's played for her school here. She's played for Ireland here.
And uh, we're delighted to introduce our new scoring system here this afternoon. It's very high tech. Uh, it's from Port Leash, and uh, it's doing a great job for us so far. You know, uh, multitasking again, Ross. What can I say? Normally, yeah. it's, normally it's coaching my team and giving out to referees, but today it's <laughs> scoreboard and co-commentary. And Lauren David planted the feet there, but no joy on that occasion. Laura Furlong tidying things up. It goes to the corner for Coase. Second chance in there. Julie Donnelly fighting hard. Hits the deck. But travel called and the ball is back with Ulidia. Good defense there from Ulidia. Didn't take the bait and, and foul out. Or make a foul there. So good job from them. It's Loretto who will need to be careful in terms of team fouls for another reverse layup attempt is from Claire Whelan there sorry I beg your pardon that's Grace Kennedy these weeks are just so I'm sure I'm sure there's nothing fun or enjoyable about it on the floor when you consider the stakes are just so high but these weeks are just so enjoyable for fans for neutrals for commentators and a timeout's been called by Loretto. I think Sarah Woods just wants to calm things down. So it's 6.17 on the clock. We'll be back to you in just one minute. I think, to be fair, in terms of that timeout, I don't think anyone's going to change things drastically, such as the scoreboard as it is. Maybe a case for coaches just to remind players of their initial assignments. Yeah, it, also just to help them settle down. You know, like, these kids are going to be nervous. Huge crowd, probably haven't played in front of a crowd like this before, uh, most of them. So, you know, it, it's just, you know, give them a couple of seconds, let them get a breath. You know, set your offense, what you want to do next time down the floor. And there's a nice out-of-bounds play. Nice shot as well. Created for Laura Furlong. Look at the around the back from Maguire. She goes all the way. Gets the roll. What a finish. Wow. Enya Maguire. 5-4 for Ulidia. 5.45 left in the first. Not, and, you know, nothing um, telegraphed or pre-planned about that. It just turned out the most efficient way to beat a player was around the back. Yeah, that was, it was a great move there, and lost the defense totally. And then another great move coming back down from Devitt down straight down the middle against that 3-2 zone as well. Impressive speed as well. Grace Kennedy runs down a dead end. Big defense there from Laura Furlong. Ball passed straight to Sirka McCall. Devitt to take it away. Donnelly lets Ulidia off the hook there. Well, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> it worked again there for Enya Maguire, but the finish wasn't quite as precise as the first effort. And again, Ross, that's just down to, to nerves. Like, if you see the, the miss the other end from Donnelly as well, it's just, uh, you know, getting herself into the game and finishing she'll, those. She'll hardly go for the hat-trick. It's a lot simpler this time. She pulls up and hits a two-handed, looks to the ref. Ref shakes the head. Good pass over the top, well improvised there from Loretto. She looks good to go all the way herself, and we'll get the chance to make it a three-point play. Well done, Laura Furlong. Yeah, one of the girls that uh, Sarah Woods had talked about before, or Sarah Chubb had talked about before the game, definitely stepping up there, nice finish. 
Um, we have a timeout there whilst I looked away. So with 4.32 to go in this first quarter, it's Loretto 8, Lilidia 5. We used to be quiet as well, you know. We're not that far away from them. No, but they'd probably hear me anyway. They don't, they, it's not so much that they'd hear you, Martin. It's just that they just feel the vibrations of your voice through the floor. Yes, I've heard that before. 4.19 to go in the first. Great pace to this game. And there's quite some variety as well for Loretto in terms of who's bringing the ball up as well. Good Eurostep attempt there from Devis. Devitt seems to be the, you know, the, the main person on this team. She's organizing everything. She's very good at attacking the basket. She sees a pass as well, so you know she'd be a, a key member definitely for Loretta Stevens Green. And that levels things in terms of team fouls as well, three apiece. We saw there was games yesterday, Martin, where in many cases. Hitting your free throws was the difference between winning and losing. We had, uh, there was an under 16 C team there that um, one of the poor chaps went 0 for 6 from the free throw line and it just, you knew he'd just gotten the yips. The head dropped in between the first and second shot and it really was the difference between the sides. Uh, and you know, and it generally looked like the ones who were making their free throws not just because they were putting more points on the board, but it indicated the composure and confidence they had to follow through and go for gold. Yeah, uh, like that's not just even at this level, that's at every level. Like free throws are so important now in the game. Like you're getting two free throws after every four fouls. So, you know, you're, you're going to the line, um, you know, missing free throws can, as, as coaches will say, can be the winning and losing of games, you know. Um, so when you get there, it's the only shot you get five seconds to shoot the ball. Take your time. Double introduction for you, Lydia, with Faith Denny and Tiona Bailey coming in. So Gareth McGuire making early use of the bench there as Kaylee McLaughlin and Nicola Patterson take a seat. That's a long three from Enya there. Tough shot to make from way out there. So now things just slowing down a little. And Enya is in there. Bossing the defence, making sure the assignments are right. And she really needed Ebby Galli, uh, Ellie Gabby Watson to get closer there. And that's what presented a free opportunity for Sarah Coase. They've come out of their kind of 3-2 into a 2-3 now. And Enya's gone in the centre. Whereas at the other end, they're in a 1-3-1. So it's trying to exploit the gaps that are going to be available to um, to Lydia there. And, you know, the corners are soft on the 1-3-1. On the this is team fouls, Ross, is it? Yeah, we're in team fouls now for Loretto, so. I missed that foul. I was looking into your deep, um, I'm going to guess blue eyes, so that's why I missed. Give us a look. Beautiful. Yeah, blue eyes. We're playing guess who up here. The butler did it. Now, uncontested, Davis. Looks to have 
the roam of the court here. Coast was looking for it. Devitt may look to go in herself. That's a fantastic move. Just a little bit too much heat on the shot. Yeah, it was a great step through. Looking to finish. Uh, I'm, look, I'm lucky with the finish. Unfortunately for Faith Denny, the one thing she was lacking there was confidence. Devitt goes for three. It's off the front of the room. It's back in with Coast and definitely foul there. She'll take two shots with her to the free throw line. Really interesting to see uh, a player turn around to um, the sideline and shout dad instead of coach. <laughs> yeah, that's it's different. And Garrett's got a lot of experience, as we know, both as a player and as a coach, so he'll be a big help to his team today, as will both Sarah's on the other side. And not forgetting Mr. O'Neill, of course. So 2.56 to go in this first quarter. It's 10 points to six, and Lilian, Lil let me try that again. Lydia in foul trouble now as well. And maybe Enya could have waited for a better option there rather than forcing it herself. Gets the block on Devitt, but travel was called. Maybe one step too many in that Euro step. You literally have got to get both of the McGuire's, you know, into the game, get them, you know, scoring, because they're, like, looking at the last game between them, they had 64 points in the semi-final, so they're going to need yeah. more from them in this game. They've only got six points on the board in the first eight minutes here. Out of 60, I mean, like, it was, it's not like they scored 90, I mean. 68 or 70. Yeah, yeah. Now, that is one of the things about the game at this level, and I'm sure... The coaching staff of Loretto have their homework done, but I mean, it's not hard to realize who needs to be scouted in terms of you, Lydia. And it's very clear that they have a plan yeah, to yep. shut them down, and it does appear to be working so far. So, a lot to be said for that home crowd. It's up for three, it's unlucky there. Martha McLeod. Good finish inside there from, uh, I think it was Donnelly. Or maybe Ashton Coas, is it? Um, we're not keeping live. Oh, well done there, Loretto. That's excellently recycled. Ball live. Martha McGlade did the hard work there. Big block from Maguire inside on the shot from Clodagh Cullen. As Enya and Kennedy combine. I just talked to uh, Enya's mum before the game. She said that uh, Aaron had been having a couple of injuries lately, something with Chinsman, so maybe that's why she's out getting a breather now at the minute. I suppose we, we make points about schools basketball during weeks like this. And they obviously transfer to all other aspects of the game, and it does appear that playing hurt is one of them. Huge pressure there on Enya. Big block inside. It was a combination, maybe of Colas and Anna Ryan. I think Anna Ryan was called for the foul on that one. It's her first foul, I think. Yeah, it's Laura Furlong who really needs to be careful. That's why she's on the bench at the moment. She picked up three fouls in the first few minutes. There's one twenty-five to go in this first quarter. And you can see in terms of the setup, Loretto consistently have more options available to them. And that was well timed to get Devitt open, but it wasn't enough to get the ball in the basket. Uh, that's a great re rebound there from Kennedy and a good outlet pass to Enya. She ran the floor and she went strong at the basket, trying to take that foul. She she got to make her free throws now when she gets there. I think it was is happy to seek out the contact as seek out the basket such was the situation with both teams in a position to give up free throws great rebound in size and Kennedy again on the board Kennedy's been doing a lot yeah. of work doing really well for her team second chance points and we're inside the last minute now yeah 
And sure. that was Martha McGlade who actually turned around to her coach as if to apologize, but that's not how a team sport works. And that's why Loretta are now 14 points to eight to the good with 39 seconds to go. Clodagh Cullen with a good finish inside there, but they, there's a good shot from Anya. They, they're kind of been left open on the outside shot and they've got to make sure that they crash the boards to try and get second chance opportunities. Uh, they might get easier shots that way. There's another three-pointer. And this one is good. And now Loretto really have extended their lead. 17 points to eight. We're into the last 10 seconds. There'll be no shot clock here. And that's why you see Maguire slowing things down. Wants to take it on herself from way outside. That was really ambitious. And it does provide a chance now if the shot can get it away from Devis. Beats the buzzer. Can't make it count. The end of the first quarter. And Loretto starting to pull away. And the crowd are on their feet. Lydia now really going to try and lift the siege. I don't think they're enjoying their basketball too much right now. And if they can just get a lucky break, if they can give themselves a reason to smile, give themselves a reason to lighten the mood, I think that could be a big help. The Maguires combining. Enya with the baseline drive. It's a second chance opportunity inside for Ellie Gabby Watson. You Lydia need some help from, uh, you know, the... the the teammates to, of both Aaron and Anya. And, Instant and time out there. Really interesting to know. Just 26 seconds gone in this second quarter, chasing a nine point lead. Would that, uh, would that be seen as an unusual thing, Martin, to wait less than 30 seconds into the start of a new quarter to 
get some instructions back into your team? It, it is like, I mean, it's, it's his second timeout as well. So he's got none left now, which is the other side of it. But here's another timeout straight away. All very interesting. 9.22 left in this second quarter. Oh, we love this kind of stuff. All breaks out. Pretty frenetic for the last minute or so. It doesn't appear that the timeouts have been much help to either side, unless Enya can do something here because she does have Aaron to her right. Does really well there to prevent the intercept. Gets in inside herself. Fighting hard in there. Does get it back. That's great work there by... Aaron comes out to try to take her own three to the front of the rim. Good rebound inside by Devitt. There's a bit of a press on her now. And you seem to be back on duties there. It, oh, that's well done to create the space inside. They look to have kind of gone to a little bit like a box and one, Ross. So they're going to try and take Devitt out of the game by putting Enya up on her, I think. That's what it did in, in that defensive stand there and Clodagh Cullen has been featuring in possession and there she is again turns and shoots doesn't quite have the radar fixed just yet but she's doing great work in there and I think you'd alluded to you know uh, Sarah Woods is placing a lot of emphasis in the post in the timeout it's clear that Clodagh Cullen is going to be a key there yeah, definitely. Like I mean, just watching the timeout from from up here, Sarah looked like she wanted to get the ball into the post and maybe then kick it back out for a three. You know, which is Again, what you do against the zone. You know, McGuire is shooting from 25 feet minimum of her last two or three attempts, and it's not working out for her right now. Yeah, they've got loads of time here. I mean, they don't need to be rushing stuff. I mean, there's still 28 minutes of a game left here, and you know, it'll get better. They'll get back in the game. I'm pretty sure. That's Cullen inside. This time gets. Over Aaron Maguire and Coast this time is helping to stretch the lead. Coast and Cullen doing really well to combine there. Superb pass inside by Enya Maguire with three maroon uniforms in front of her, finds the space. Did a great job there. Did uh, Enya, she just attracted the defense and then dumped it inside. There's that little pass to the post Cullen. and there's another layup for Loretta. And Cullen just needed, as we said in the last possession, just to get the radar in. She has it now. She knows where the basket is. And that's frustrating there for... It was uh, Marta McLare, I think, there on that one, Ross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the other team. Yeah, well, that, yeah. that normally helps. There's yeah. another, uh, another two points thank for you, thank Clodagh you, Cullen. Thank you for filling that in there whilst I was deep in thought. I was um, just wondering where you were for a second. Yeah. I knew you were standing beside me, but wondering, still did wondering you, where you were. Did you not see the butterflies mm -hmm. just flying around my head there? <laughs> 
Right, back in the room, back in the National Basketball Arena at 6.59 to go in the second quarter. It's been, well, it's been odd, uh, and not just because of what your commentator has been up to. When you consider how both teams have used all their timeouts, including one call by each side in the opening minute of this particular stanza. Good rebound by Coase. Did very well to find Devitt. Devitt may look to put more pace on this. Pulls up inside. Misses with the two. But you can see that frustration is still there for you, Lydia. They just haven't found their groove yet. Yeah, well, like I told you, it's stepped up and Devitt. They obviously have, have dropped back into their 2-3 now. Gets the feet set, that's desperately unlucky there in the attempt by Martha McGlade, whose name I now know. Enya fires it to Aaron in the corner, sees that there's an option with the baseline drive. It's back with Cullen, she's absolutely swamped up here. And Aaron Maguire can scarcely believe that call against her. It's going to be her third foul as well. Uh, Enya hasn't had a break yet but Aaron has been in and out of this game and she's just decided to double down on intensity going really hard there McGlade with the effort and here's Enya and she wanted to launch that ball immediately she's got to get it over now half she's court stuck and they've just about got it out of the half court in time lovely step inside unlucky there by Grace Kennedy. Yeah, like Grace is kind of the, the third player that they need to step up now. You know, start making a couple of layoffs, start making a couple of shots, take a bit of the pressure off both the Maguire sisters. The distribution from Loretto really has been key to their performance today. They are providing open, not necessarily open looks, but they're always finding the player in the most space to give themselves the best opportunity. That was very, very ambitious there from Enya Maguire. Looks to the ref, waits to get it. It's over the top for Coase. She has time to finish here. That's unlucky. Maybe she had too much time on it. Offsets Aaron. She's got McGlade to her left. She tried to take it on herself. Yeah, like the, the Aaron and Enya are you know, doing really well. They're, they're trying to you know, bring their team into the game, but sometimes maybe they're just forcing it just that little bit. Whereas if they settle down a little bit, wait for the right shot to come, you know, get a bit of movement, get a couple of screens going, it might be a little easier for them. But they're fighting hard, you know? Well, they, the scoreline really is against them now. We're halfway through the second quarter. There's five minutes left to go. They trail by 12, but they absolutely have every shot in the locker to pull this back if it starts going their way. There's no doubt about that. And you can see with how they're fired up that they're a momentum team. And once that's get going, there'll be a lot going for them. I, Triple substitution there for Loretto with 15, 6 and 77 all hitting the pines. That's uh, Anna Ryan, Martha McGlade and Clo Clodagh Cullen all sitting down. I see Laura Furlong has come back in as well. She, Laura's on four fouls by the board unless there's a mistake up there. But she was definitely on three anyway. So yeah, she's going back to three now. One from two, again from the line. I think they've gotten something out of every trip so far, even if it's just the one. It's keeping them in contact, Ross. You know, I mean, it's a very long game. Here's a fast break and a great steal from Aaron McGuire. And it was her raw speed that gave her the opportunity to finish on a pose there. And now with their back, they've just tucked it inside the, the 10 points. There's 4.35 left to go. But look at that. Laura Furlong gets the roll. And Aaron can scarcely believe it. She doesn't want to get up off her haunches there. Because she moves to fourth personal foul. She's in real danger here. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Garen out. <laughs> What decision he makes is he leave her in there and just tell her basically not to play any defense or does he take her out and 
you know, not risk the last foul, you know. You get the sense that Loretto and their coach will be savvy enough to target that as well, perhaps. Absolutely, they will. That was tough on a kid as well. Four fouls in the first 15 minutes of an All Ireland final. She's got to be very, very smart now. Gara's going to take her out, I think. Yeah, it looks like. He's got McLaughlin is going to come back in. Yeah, he's got no choice there. Angel's going to have to work doubly hard now, and also, you know, Grace Kennedy's going to have to come into the game and really step up for you, Lydia. Well, this game won't be won or lost in this quarter, or, or possibly indeed the next so let's keep her in reserve for what you Lydia will hope to come Loretto the green would be more than happy to be out of sight by then as Enya has two players for company and it was indeed Devitt and McCall that combined there and McCall wants the ball and that's what you want to see from a substitute that's super nice soft hands in there it's not good enough Kennedy will mop it up and the frustration is really showing there. Yeah, good to see Enya, you know, encouraging her teammate there after that one. David, it's opened oh, up it's for a little bit. Step. Yeah, good call from the referee. Not the first time she's been called for that particular move as well. And it just shows that just that little bit of composure would be of so much benefit to, to either side, but we're more than happy to excuse a great interception there by Devitt, and she wants to go all the way on Enya. Enya timed it really well. She was afraid of giving up the foul, but I think Devitt was more than a match on that occasion for her Ireland opponent. Straight away, they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and it's opened up for Kennedy inside. Big defense in there, an imposing presence to Laura Furlong. Enya goes, but it's off the backboard. And Devitt will look to push it as well. Again, seeing so teammates demanding the ball, showing that they're open, is absolutely fantastic at this level. And particularly when a team isn't used to the level of volume that is in this arena. They have to be right. both seen and heard in a big, big way. Unlucky there by Tiona Bailey with the shot. And you just about gets a hand in there. Fighting hard for it too is Kaylee McLaughlin, but it's still there for Furlong. That one's short. It was nothing but net, it just didn't go into the hole. Yeah, like again, you look at Devitt. Devitt is really controlling this game now for uh, Loretto Stevens Green. She's not only making baskets, she's, she's setting up her players close to the basket to make easy layoffs. Fantastic acceleration there from Maguire. Goes back around and resets as Kennedy looks to get herself open. Two and a half minutes to go here. And that is when well, Lauren Devitt has picked up her second personal foul. Um, we do have a, a lost and found here. Uh, at the National Basketball Arena. If anyone has seen Martin Conroy's lung, could they please drop it into the lost and found of the National Basketball Arena? It's very much appreciated. And that's a 15 point lead now for Loretta. Loretta, I beg your pardon. Or the green, I think, as they might prefer to be called. And we're back. Did you find it? Just about. Good man. Thanks for not, you know, coughing up along into a microphone, because that would have been gross. This oh. old, old fluid that's going around, Ross. Really inventive mm. there from Julie Donnelly, but no such luck. Two minutes left now. Nice step inside. Still no joy from Maguire. There's nowhere else to look there, because there was no contact from anywhere on that. And Donnelly again. Well, sorry. That was Laura Furlong on that occasion. And good inventiveness there. That ability to improvise has really, really helped the green. And they look strong and committed, and it's just not going in the hole. Yeah, that 1-3-1 one, one defense has really worked very well for them. You know, they're forcing the shot. They're taking easy rebounds, which means they can get down the floor easier and get into good positions for shots. 
Well, Young and Orion had two bites of the cherry there. Neither of them dropped. But with just less than 90 seconds now to go to the half, you get the sense that if Yulidia can get back to the bench or indeed maybe hit the locker room as we saw somebody do yesterday, without hemorrhage hemorrh words, bleeding any more points. Yeah, look, we've seen it over the years here. I mean, I don't know, you remember about four years ago with that unbelievable game with Ratangan, where they came back from 26 points down in the last quarter to win the game. It's one of the first games we ever streamed uh, of the cup finals here. That was a league final, actually. And it was phenomenal. Unlucky there from Devitt. Again, that inventiveness and willingness to improvise. It's going to be team fouls now as well as so those two free throws. I remember watching that game on a stream. I was going into referee a game in Port Arlington and uh, I stopped watching in the last quarter and yeah. I came back out after my first quarter and checked the score and Rattangan was somehow ahead. I think we're talking about a 22 point comeback in 10 minutes or something 26. Like 26, yeah. The great Aaron Whelan, of course, was on that team and... Shame he never went on to achieve anything. Oh, wait. Mm. He's, he's one of your finest operators in the Basketball Ireland Men's Division 1. Shane Mahan as well as our team captain. Of course. Nothing but admiration for those guys. There's only 35 seconds left. And the only bit of success you could argue that you Lydia have had in this game is from the free throw line. So McGuire may look to take it. Kennedy's wide open. That was the right option there. Good work inside. From McLaughlin and there we go. On. There we go. Nestles just where you Lydia needed it with less than 10 seconds to go. And that gap is from 16 points is back in to 12 now. And there's an error forced. That was a huge shot from Enya there. And that gets her team right back in the game now. You know, they're going to get Aaron back in in the second half. I know she's on four fouls. She's got to watch herself. But like, it, it, it's. You know, it's a four-possession game, Ross. 100%. And if Yulidia can tell themselves they're only as good as their last shot, unlucky there to beat the buzzer from the green. So maybe things aren't as much of a foregone conclusion as they may have been in the last couple of moments because at halftime here in the Subway Schools All-Ireland Under-19B Cup Final, it is Yulidia integrated 19 points. Loretto Stevens green 31. Join us.
So we had a hunch. Lydia would head for the dressing room rather than the bench at halftime, and that's exactly how it's played out. So what will those five minutes of introspection do for themselves? Will they come out Ooh. a different player in this half? And A little bit of contact off the floor there. Probably not seen by the officials. Don't think Martha McGlade was overly apologetic about it, and maybe she didn't need to be. Good rebound. Yeah, well done there inside from Ellie Gabby Watson. And you called it right. Aaron is back on the floor, despite the four fouls on her. And the two sisters have taken just a little bit of ownership over this as they combine to bring the gap back to 10 points with 9 minutes and 10 seconds left in this Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup final. Under 19 B level. Uh, that was a tough decision for, for G inside. Like, I mean, what does he do? Does he... Oh, big oh. tree! And I'm sure she called bank there as she just has a little laugh to... Uh, back to her dad slash coach. And look at this, 7 points between the sides. There are no pictures on the score sheet, Ross. <laughs> and it's yeah and look you can see there's already some urgency in there it does appear to have the green a little bit rattled you know we said it just at the end of the first half there was a big three from Enya to get her team back to within 12 points now they've come out with the first five points of the second half this could be a different game very quickly yeah and you can see there whether it was the pass or just that little flinch of taking the eye off the ball from Lauren David. I mean, if it can happen to Packy Bonner in the 1994 World Cup when Wim Bianca shooting at you in a round of 16, I mean, I guess it could happen in a national basketball arena too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I've no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, the only thing I remember with Packy Bonner is saving that penalty. Yeah, that was only 24 years ago. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I was on a, I, I had uh, the great honour of commentating for my alma mater yesterday, St. Bunchens. Yeah, very good. Reaching an under 16C final. I went on the bus afterwards to say to them, look, you got, uh, you know, your school have finished with a silver medal, but go home and tell their story. If anyone asks, how did the lads get on? Say they did really, really well. And then I had to ask the question. I said, just a quick straw poll on the uh, bus there. Uh, was anyone alive when I was in St. Bunchens College? I doubt it. Nope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Time out coming now from Sarah Woods. With 8.03 left and a seven-point lead for Loretto the Green. If I'm a little bit with the slow with the score going up on the line, I apologise. I'm definitely not as bad as Paul Kelleher and David Baker were at the National no Cup semi finals. No need to name names now. Yeah. No need to name names. I believe I was uh, given as the scapegoat that day, even though I wasn't anywhere. In the building. I, I don't think I was even in the gym at the time. <laughs> Things could get very interesting here. And Maximum intensity. And one. Here we go. 
Seven points is down to five, could come down to four. That's two throws of a basketball. There we go. Different game now. Hot out of the blocks. You know, you look, that's uh, Enya now. She's got nine out of the last 11 points for you, Lydia. And an 8 0 run. What is the response? Well, Ellie Gabby Watson will be disappointed with that. It was a good drive, you know. I mean, we'll see what she does from the line now. Now, in terms of the aesthetic on the scoreboard, this is a big basket. It doesn't go. She couldn't push it out to six points and offsets. Maguire did think about finding her younger sister but just ran out of runway there yeah it looked it was a good option again she was driving at David David's on three fouls she wasn't gonna you know try and foul her so she just unlucky to lose the handle there you know yeah we, we've spoken awful lot about the four fouls that Aaron is on but uh, both David and Furlong two key players for the green are on three fouls at the minute Absolutely, look, and they have to be very careful now for the next four or five minutes to make sure they don't pick up that fourth foul. That's a really good pass from David. Got as much on it as she could to feed Furlong there. Aaron at the baseline, waiting for Enya to make her move. Aaron goes herself with the scoop. Got her own rebound, up she goes. There you Great go. Great work, Aaron. And now it is a one possession game. 32 plays 29 with 6.40 to go in this third quarter. We are hitting some championship minutes right here. Big rebound inside. She's going to get the and one as well. That is superb from Clota Cullen. She had a big impact when she came in in the second quarter. And there was a lot more emphasis put on post play by the green. And this could be the absolute ideal repost. Makes no mistake. That's good composure and really well done from Cullen there. Gets her team just a little bit of a gap again. Nice way to hit the bench. Julie Donnelly coming in. And that is Ellie Gabby Watson moving to three fouls for you, Lydia. Two team fouls apiece, 6.27 to go in the second quarter. Pass to nowhere, still time for it to get picked up. Here's Kennedy for three. It's over the top, it was wide open, 79 to 72. Bringing the score to 37 for Loretta Green. The Green, Laura Furlong and Julie Donnelly combining there. And the perfect response. Yeah, you, from the green. you see, oh, there's a great steal from Amy McGuire. She's going to go to the line now. But you see on the last offensive drive that Aaron had to just stand back. She just had to let the layup happen. That's tough as a, as a defensive player, and unless you're James Harden, I suppose, um, to stand back and let a you know, player drive to the basket like that. But it's, um, you know, it's smart, and she's going to stay in the game because she didn't try and get in and steal the ball. Nicola Patterson and Tiona Bailey coming into the game. It is Kaylee McLaughlin and Ellie Gabby Watson making way. And as well as this game being more entertaining because it's tighter, I think both sides are looking more composed. Yeah, absolutely. They've got into the flow of the game now. I mean, they're like, instead of one from two in the line now, the last two trips to the line have been two from two. You know, you're hitting your three-point play the opposite end. You know, the... the, the Great oh. pass inside to Coase. Superb, the vision from Devitt. And she applauds her teammates. You know, you're playing a little bit too high at that, that time, and it allowed uh, an easy layup inside. Great pass, though. Ambitious from Aaron. The rebound is easy, and off goes Laura Furlong. She has Enya in front of her, and I think that is Enya's fourth block this afternoon. What a... 
two point swing this or a four point swing it would be if it could go our way there that's a the Kenby Matumbo moment there you know I'm surprised you didn't see the little big finger wagging at her as she came back out after that block <laughs> <laughs> awesome and it just goes to show as well the ability to make blocks isn't necessarily about size reach Three. or athleticism it can just be about skill and timing and that's exactly what was required of Aaron Maguire there to bring the gap back to five points. There's five minutes left in this third quarter. It is very much game on, which is a relief again. for the neutrals. That's a good shot, though, you know. It's sometimes what you call a heat check, but she's wide open there. She's got to shoot that. Off goes Davis. The pass wasn't easy. The finish was difficult. And the opportunity goes astray. Well, Anya has been fantastic. And like just like Devitt for the Green, Anya has kept her team in it by rebounding, by making some big shots. You know, and it, it's going to be a two-possession game now when these free throws go in. And that was really good awareness there from Kennedy to realize that a simple pivot would take her out of trouble and open up the lane for her. as Laura Furlong seeks an opportunity to get some counsel with her coach. Some hand signals going on here down on, on the floor for Sarah Woods. Either she's a member of the Stonemasons uh, or she has some very specific instructions to offer to her players. I missed that one, Ross. Um, looking like... Under looking at the triangle shape you showed me there. So yeah, imagine what Brian O'Driscoll did scoring a hat trick of tries against France in Paris in the early noughties. You're not really doing too well on the other sports references, Martin. I may need to dial them back. No, you're okay. I like, yeah, I okay, like rugby. You know I like rugby. Right, okay. 2003. I didn't want to put a year on it to be honest. I was a bit afraid. Was it foot and mouth year? Never mind. Maybe was in 2003. Somewhere around there, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, you commentate, I'll Google. Oh my God. Love Google. Second one is made from Devitt. It's going to put five points between the team. 4.22 to go in the third quarter. Ross is on Google. You don't need to commentate about my Google, you need to commentate about the match, man. Yeah. McGuire coming off the screen, looks at the three, passes it up, takes the drive on just still. Don't do it better than Great me. Great. I don't mean to do it, just don't do it better than me. That's Aaron McGuire brings it to a three point game. 3.57 to go, 40 37 in favor of Loretta to Green. Another two points inside, and I think it's Coas again. It is indeed, it's Ashen Coas, brings it back out to five. Well, I know the year, you can have one more guess if you want. I'm actually going to go earlier. I think it might be 99 or 98. Would it be? One well, more go. The year 2000. Wow. So, again, no one on... Well, possibly some people on the floor claim that sport are actually supposed to be talking about where they may have been alive when that happened. Probably the In coaches. the meantime. So, um, Martin Conroy's mediocre basketball commentary would have informed you that uh, there's less than four minutes left to go in this third quarter. Absolutely. And that there's five points between the sides. It's like catchphrase, isn't it? Say it as you see it. urgency or drama from you, Martin, to be quite honest. You know, I'm so glad I don't have a director in my ear today. I have enough drama in my own life, I think. Have I? <laughs> I think there's more than enough drama on the court. And Enya knew that that one was going short. Yeah, she did the same thing the last time it was called for breaking the line. You know, it's still only a four-point game. We're back from a 16-point game to a four-point game. Really impressive stuff. Loretto on team fouls. And they've got three players now on three fouls as well. All of whom would be very much go-to players for them, including Laura Furlong, who you saw there. And Devitt with the rip. Possession arrows with you, Lydia. You know, um, Kennedy again, just been that third person for you, Lydia, just pulling out that rebound there, did really well. Maguire's in the backcourt. 
Aaron plays Enya. No, she doesn't. Devitt comes in. We see the speed again of Enya Maguire. Here we go. Round the back again. And the, the swerve and the sass is back in her play as she knows that she has a chance to bring a gold medal in All-Ireland Trophy, a Subway Schools Cup win back. What a huge shot. From North of the border. And there are two points between the sides. Aaron Maguire that time. 2.50 left in this third. You know, Aaron has been fantastic as well. When you think that she's played, you know, nearly 10 minutes with 12 and minutes with four, four fouls. And every time the Green have needed to produce the goods, they have done so when required. What a score there by Laura Furlong. A deep two. What about the long three? I think that one might have shaved the rim. I think it was touched as well, so it's going to stay Lydia Ball. They've been doing really well at driving to the basket and then, you know, been able to kick out. So hopefully they're going to stay with their game plan here now because they've pulled themselves right back into this game. Bounce pass to Kennedy. The, the face guard put her off shooting to three. It's back with Enya. Had her back to basket there before she figured out what she needed to do. Got to get a shot away. Fake, and she just wasn't aware enough of her footwork. They need to shake that one off and move on. You know, you Lydia. Again, they've got Loretto on team fouls with five fouls, so they should be driving at them now, trying to get themselves to the line and make easy layup, easy shots. Two minutes and ten seconds to go. What a treat for the neutrals to see that there's just four points between the sides now. No joy for Furlong there. It goes up from Devitt. It's back working hard in there with Sarah Coase. Great rebound again. But away from comes Enya. Yeah. Just a little bit of change of pace. Ooh. Oh, and that's a super finish there from Enya between the change of pace getting midair and then realising she had to get her shot away and we're back to a two point game, Lit 140 left in the third little LeBron tuck there as she went past the player and a great finish from Enya let's call that one a pass, it doesn't work out, yes it does, two shots Julie Donnelly that leaves both teams on team fouls now for the last minute and a half of this quarter And it's a first personal foul for Enya Maguire, would you believe? You've got to hand it to the Green. So far in this game, every time they've needed a score, they've got one. You know, when they, they've chipped away the lead, have you, Lydia? And, you know, the Green have done a good job of just keeping themselves a little bit further away. And just looked for the tiniest second there, like Julie Donnelly might get a second bite of the cherry. Back out to a three-point game. Super work being done by Aaron, holding off two players for her sister. She gets possession. A little bit wary of the footwork this time, so she gets set, goes inside, goes past three players to get the ball away. It does create some space for Devitt. Can Enya do it one more time? Well, she did enough without getting a clean block on it this time. Really clean defense. Aaron back on offense, pulls up to shoot for three. It's short, there's less than a minute to go in the third. And off goes Laura Furlong. She finds Devitt at the elbow. Unlucky there. One more opportunity, a second chance score. Won't become a third as there's grey hands on that ball. But it does keep the ball down the right end of the court. Good work inside for Sarika McCall. And it crashed the boards really well. They're going to end up with a third opportunity now to get a two points out of this play. With 45 seconds to go. Eulidia in foul trouble as well. They go to the corner. There's a foot on the line, but there was a foot outside the sideline before it got that far. Gray ball. Play ball. Aaron Maguire. Are they going to go for a quick shot and try and get a last possession, or are they going to just use the... The clock and take two possessions. There's a great pass. Did she go off her feet? Yep, yeah, she didn't need. Thirty-three seconds to go. It's a one possession game. Whether you're in Ulidia, in the green, in work, or on the bus, don't go anywhere for the next ten minutes or so of basketball. I think this one is gonna come down to Daymakers and heartbreakers, to be quite honest with you. 20 seconds left in the third. 
It's Pat O'Neill issuing the instructions here. Yeah, I just saw Pat tell Inya to make sure that she gets the last shot. So she's going to hold the ball off, go with about five, six seconds to go and look to take her shot down. Pulls back. Great Devin pass. For company, great pass. Unlucky there. Aaron does manage. Well, she nearly made a, made a great out of a sow's ear there. With 10 minutes to go, three points between the sides. The green 45, Ulidia 42. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stretch. Ten minutes left in this Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup Under-19B Cup Final between Ulidia Integrated and Loretto the Green CBS. Loretto, as per coach's instructions, getting the first basket of that final quarter. It's out to five. I think Erin has done remarkably well, given that she has she's just one personal foul away from hitting the bench for the rest of the game. I don't think it's, you know, other than not being able to get into anything too controversial, there's been no let up in physicality or intensity from her in any way, shape or form. No, look, I mean, she's been very smart about what she's done. You know, she's, for a kid her age to be, you know, so smart as not to step in and take a silly foul and, you know, then be out of the game. She's played with intensity, left enough space between her and the offensive player to make sure the referees can't make a call. Loretto coach Sarah Woods wags her whiteboard marker furiously to try and get things set for that possession. But it is Enya that comes away with the ball. What a pass over to her sister. Bounce pass inside, it looked opened up. Went for the inside-outside play. Maybe too much emphasis on finding Maguire's as Devitt goes inside. Fantastic and the defense. defense from Enya Maguire really has been exceptional today. Yeah, that's in, not her first time, think, Russ. I, think, I don't think she's given up any points in a one-on-one -on -one situation today with speed, skill, and timing. You know, you watch her. It's either been a block, it's been a tip away, it's been... A great stand to make sure it's hard to get the shot over. She's done a fantastic job for her team. I think she knows whether to push players onto their left or right-hand side yeah, as well. Yeah. There's not too many two-handed basketballers at this level. Aaron in the corner. It's for three. It's over the top, but Grace Kennedy has a chance to recycle. Goes for the long two. There you go. Now we're talking. And I think Kennedy deserved that for her endeavor this afternoon. Yeah, she's been the third player for them, hasn't she? The, the, the third player for that team that has just stepped up and done done that little bit for them. Really has from the elbow that time. Two-point game. 8.20 to go. And the Green are calling the O'Driscoll play again. It's got a name now. Triangle. you throwing shapes. Wah, wah, wah.
throw to Cullen. Any time she's been on the floor, she has affected this game in a positive way. Yep, there you go. No commentators cursed this time. Too good for each Rosen Clota. Gives her team a bit of breathing space. Back into the game is Sarah Coase. Eight fifteen left. Four point game. In the meantime, Grace Kennedy has moved to three fouls. Here she is now. Might go for the long two. Two again. Anya won't try and shoot it over Cullen. We'll try and get it inside. What a Bounce pass. To Kennedy, who I don't think was quite expecting it. It's kicked out. Massive intensity there from Devitt on Maguire. It's back out to the sister. That one's going to pull short, but there's an opportunity oh. inside. Travel called as Ellie Gabby Watson tried to make space for herself in there. Just had a little bit of experience. Just went off her feet, just tried to get the shot away. But didn't have time to set the pivot. 7.47 to go. You can't take your eyes off of this one. Dever with the drive. Second chance from Coast. Third chance from Coast. Will it be a fourth? It just might be fantastic work inside from the post player as Cullen goes to the basket and makes the two. Again, Cullen coming up with a big bucket. She just made two free throws. You know, pushes that lead out to six points for her team. The screen inside, or outside, I should say. They're trying to keep them guessing now. The scoop goes over the top, and she was already fighting for that ball before it was on a downward trajectory. Longest first quarter ever. In, in the history of Irish basketball. That was Dave Baker's fault again. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> Devitt goes the long way around, tries to step inside. Doesn't get called on the travel this time, but it does get called against her. Double dribble call there, I think. Less than seven now. Still lots of time here. Still two chuck and chases of a basketball between the sides. That's the same play again between Aaron and Enya. And she has to pull up and find somebody, lest she be called for a double dribble. No, she did. That. The extra step was in there as she tried to free up space. And I think that was a case of Laura Furlong trying to be smart and playing the whistle, but it's worked out for her. Yep, she's going to get to the line now for another two free throws. Laura Furlong has played really well again today, as her coach has said she would. And for the first time in quite some time, there's an opportunity at the very least for this to go beyond a two-possession game. Yulidia had done pretty much everything right in making a game of this, and I think... The weight of that opportunity maybe just played on Laura, Fur Laura Furlong a little bit too much. And can you, Lydia, chase it around? Once again, Erin is fighting hard for her own rebound. Yeah, it's great work from Erin. She loves that little scoop layup. You know, after beating players with that long stride. Just got to finish on it now. Garrett will have to, you know, maybe get a timeout, maybe get him a breather here for. And you turns seconds. for three. Look at that! Just when. The Green thought they were getting away from their northern opponents. It's back to a one-score game with 6.14 to go. And what's interesting about it is the volume from Loretto has died down, not because there's any less intensity. They're just so engrossed in the game at this point yeah. that it hasn't occurred to them to find their voice. And that's why the Barons are back out on the sideline. They want it to feel like it's not five on five, it's 500 against five. They want the National Basketball Arena to be their home court for the next five minutes and 56 seconds of basketball. They could really do with the mascot putting their lion's head back on because if there are any small children around, you'd never want to see a mascot with its head off. But nonetheless. What a rebound from Inya McGuire. Yeah, and she may look to go there all the way. There you go. There you go. Oh, and gets the roll as well. And it's as close as we've been. It's the minimum between the sides. Five and a half minutes to go in this under-19 B Schools Cup final. Devitt plays Coase. 
off the glass and in. And not only have Loretto found their voice, they're off their feet. Every time there seems to be an answer. Long tree. That was quite ambitious. In the middle of all of this, Grace Kennedy has moved to four fouls. What might be the reaction if they lose a player, even if it is Enya Maguire? That's unlucky with Aaron. She's listen got to, to that playing. noise once again, and the player who arrived just in time to pick up possession was Anna Ryan. Devin is forced out of play. Time out coming from Gar. I think we all need a little breather with 4.58 to go and three points between the sides. I was going to say this is what we pay good money to see, but it was free for everyone to get in here. And this stream is brought to you courtesy of our sponsorship with Subway Schools. But what a fantastic way for an All-Ireland Schools Cup to be on the line. Full stands, full hearts. I don't want to go down the route of making Friday Night Lights quotes here, so I won't do that. But we're in the white heat of an All-Ireland final. Mm. Kennedy just fingertips away from making the vital steal. Didn't go her way. It was a risky move, and the risk didn't pay off, and the gap is out to five. Enya for three, that one's way off. And she won't be happy with her percentages from today when she looks back and does the stats on this one. Yeah, but there are but there's shots she has to take, though. You know, I mean, maybe not that one, but there are shots she has to take. Absolutely. And will she give a hoot if it turns out that her side has scored more points than their opponents? That's great intensity from Aaron. That was backcourt. But she got a tip on it, didn't she? That may be it. Well, either way, perhaps a oh, bit aimless there. And it's provided the opportunity. And I think you, Lydia, have gotten away with that one. Is that going to be the fifth foul on Kennedy? No. We'll wait and see what the scoreboard tells it. Yes, it is. And that's disappointing. That is disappointing. And she's going to need some consolation there because she's been nothing but honest endeavour over the course of this game. She's made some big contributions to her sides and she will be a loss to you, Lydia. It's a huge loss to the Into these final few minutes. She was a third player that was kind of stepping up, making baskets the other end for them as well, So and pulling some great rebounds. Efficient in play. Cullen does the right thing and kicks it out. We have a long two here. Really good effort from way inside, and it's Devis who comes up with the basket, and we're back out to seven points. And when you consider wave after wave of attack from Ulidia integrated, but every single time the Green have come up with a response. And crucially, they have never given up that lead. 
Yeah, look, I mean, they've got it back to three points, two points at one stage, and then it's either a free throw or it's a, an offensive rebound, which, to be fair to the green, they've got a lot of they've got a lot of second and third opportunities and been able to make scores off those, and that's kept that lead just a little bit, you know, far out there for you, Lydia, to, to get in front of, you know? And well done there, Kaylee McLaughlin, just applying the pressure. But I think we'll see that there is time and talent for Ulidia to come back into this game. The Lion mascot has completely abandoned the Lion's head. Right. And Needed that. Little bit of luck there. That's a nice soft hand, nice soft shot from from Anya that gets herself, gets her team two points. Great confidence there from Sir uh, from Sir and McCall to take that one on, and what a time to step up for two points. Three minutes left now. I was closely following some of the action yesterday. You can overhear the coaches, and at and at three minutes in a timeout, a coach will say. We have lots of time. There is no need to panic. There's no need to rush. And at two minutes, a coach's timeout might say, we need to get going on this. And with a minute to go, a coach might say, time is against us here. All those things are true, and all those things may indeed apply in the next two minutes and 40 seconds. But the Green want this all day long. And once again, we see the signs in the crowd. Let's go, the Green. And again, it's Furlong with a huge basket. I think so. it's timeout has been called, and we'll have a little chat about MVP possibilities when we come back. 61 plays 52 with 2.39 to go. Well, in GAA, in football, if you're watching a game in Crow Park or in the Aviva Stadium, you might hear stewards to match positions, and it's a reminder to the players on the floor that time is running out. The National Basketball Arena equivalent is if the subway salves have been left by the bench. You know it's coming to the end. You know it's coming to the end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the six inches have been delivered. Not that that matters to Laura Furlong. She, it's victory she wants to feast on. There are 10 points between the sides. It was Eulidia who called the timeout. The travel has been called. The ball is thrown away. And that frustration just starting to show. Yeah, they're stepping up their defense now, trying to put more pressure on. What a block from Anya McGuire. That is just a joy to watch. She has been incredible. In terms of scramble defense, in terms of saving points that really should be points, she has been incredible today. A joy to watch. Cullen does extremely well to keep it in play somehow manufactures a shooting opportunity it's back with Devis this is incredible play and they get the two finish. Raw Griss has just dug out two points but a fantastic finish as well Rossi I mean she did all the hard work by pulling the rebound then nice soft hands to finish and give herself and give her team a, a 12 point lead and I don't think she's been off the court no she hasn't and she's been fantastic for her team like a long way there um Laura, is it for Lauren Furlong? Furlong, absolutely. Laura, Laura Furlong, Furlong as well. Coates inside. Coates has been very good, and uh, your number six there, Cloda Cullen, as the next one. You can see where the absence of Grace Kennedy is starting to hurt you, Lydia, because 
more and more now Loretto are generating those second chance opportunities. And it's back with Coates. And I think, yeah, I think Devitt will try and calm this down here. And that's exactly the instructions that are coming from the sidelines from Martha McGlade. I don't know if Sarah Woods is an English teacher or not, but the crowd are spelling Loretto impeccably here by way of a chant. There's only one R and one T, just if you're wondering. There you go. This could be a huge week for uh, Sarah Woods. Indeed. As she comes to um, play in the cup final here on Sunday. Sunday at five o'clock, DCU Mercy taking on UCC Ambassador Glanmire. Live on TG Cahar, I believe that. But tickets are still available on Eventbrite and basketballireland.ie. And I can promise you what a game that would be. Yeah, best place to be absolutely is courtside for those tickets. If, of course, if you can't make it, you'll be able to watch it on TG Cahar. But I think we'll start plugging that after the game is sold out. How about you? 54 seconds to go. This has been an incredible game. It really has. And you can see now the bench are off their feet. Laura Furlong has given herself just that chance to smile. Sirica McCall steps up to the free throw line. Swish. Cullen and Devitt, congratulations. And McClay doesn't hesitate. 14 points is an awful lot for any team, even one with the ability of Ulidia. And I think you can see from the urgency of Enya Maguire, she may know this game is beyond them at this stage. Still, she drives into the heart of the Greens' defence. She's still here. It's just that intensity on defence. Anything she's done, and she's done fantastically well, as have the entirety of Ulidia. Anything they've done, they've done in, literally in the face of the best that the green has to offer. Yeah, you just look at uh, Loretto Stevens, the green. They, they just like they maybe they had one or two extra players, you know, and uh, they could go further down the bench, which really helps in games like this. And then they had the leadership of you know, Lauren Devitt and, or Laura Devitt and uh, Lauren Furlong. You know, they, they've done a fantastic job and, you know, well done to them. And looks like the Greens crowd will have to cut their countdown for now. But I think... This team fouls, there's going to be two free throws. And in the middle of all that, Aaron has finally given up her fifth foul. Perhaps in frustration as much as anything else, but that's not the difference between winning and losing at this point in the game. And if you think that cheer is loud, just wait and see what happens in 7.6 seconds time. Because in that much of basketball, the Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup winner in the under-19 B-Girls competition will be crowned. And I think we're just looking to get the game finished at this stage. And that's really disappointing that that's how the game will finish for you, Lydia, with a contentious call like that. And... I think Coates was happy to finish it out. But Enya had to have the last say. I don't think she's beaten the buzzer there. Yes, she has. But all it's done has affected the final score as opposed to the final result. Loretto, the green, in their maroon and white, are all Ireland champions at under-19 B girls level. This game has lived up to the promise that it really, really simmered and simmered and simmered and just boiled over in the third and fourth. It's been a really good game to watch. Yeah, like it, Loretto got out to a quick start. Uh, and then, to be fair to you, Lydia, kind of coming to the end of the second quarter, started the third, they chipped away, got right back in the game, got it to a two-point game. But as we said during the game, it just seemed that every time they got back to two or three points that Loretto the Green had an answer. They had 
you know, a couple of free throws that put him back out by four points, and then they got a, a big layup after that, put him back out by six. And then, you know, you, you just look at the, the scoring part of there. Had, they, they had maybe four or five people who were, who were getting on the score sheet, and you look at uh, Lydia, like they were very dependent on the Maguire sisters and young Kennedy. But a uh, really good game, really entertaining game, and it went a lot to both sides. Yeah, when you consider, you know, Gareth obviously had two stars in particular in his midst, but he ran his bench, Nicola Patterson, Amy Johnston, they were all in there. Faith Denny had her part to play, Ellie Gabby Watson, Grace Kennedy, who was just raw work rate for the whole thing, Kaylee McLaughlin, just was probably one of the only players in the Olivia team who had that raw pace to keep with Loretto Stevens, Green, Tiona Bailey, and of course, Aaron and Enya, who never said no, who were responsible for hauling their team back into contention. Gareth Maguire, Pan O'Neill pulling out all the stops on the sideline for the green. The plan was in place. They wanted post play. They wanted multiple players taking responsibility and that is exactly what happened right across the 40 minutes for Loretto Stevens Green when you think of the key contributions of Clodagh Cullen the likes of Claire Whelan and Ellie O'Kane and Katie Rose Barry Ashlyn Coase and her sister Sarah Anna Ryan Julie Donnelly and then of course players like Martha McGlade and Laura Furlong and Lauren Devitt just fantastic to watch. <laughs> Coaching team is Sarah Woods and Sarah Chubb. And Loretto the Green are returning to the floor as champions. We just talked about Sarah Woods and Sarah Chubb. I'm, I'm sure there's a couple of uh, All Ireland winners in there as well at some stage. I'm pretty positive of that. Both of them are excellent players. Well, the MVP is also going to be announced before the cup is raised aloft. I think, to be fair, there's candidates on both sides, be it for defence, offence, a mix of the two. Talk to us about some of your um, contenders and ultimately who you think deserves the MVP this afternoon. Or this yeah, morning, I should say. You, you look on the Olivia side, and I think that Anya Maguire has been magnificent. Like She's kept her team in the game. Aaron was very unlucky early on to, you know, to pick up the four fouls at such an early stage, which really hurt both the team and herself. Um, on the opposite side, then with Loretta the Green, uh, you have to look at Laura Furlong, who was magnificent, uh, made some big shots, pulled some big rebounds. Um, but I think, uh, you know, you look at their, their number nine, and it's Lauren Devitt, who I think was absolutely magnificent she she laid her, led her team for the whole game she was um definitely you know the best player on the floor as far as i'm concerned captain nefornia lauren devis so influential in building the lead for loretto stevens green so influential in defending it and that just leaves one formality left to happen She'll have to put aside her MVP trophy for one moment. She's got a, one more job to do. I want to see how quick Jason gets off the stage now when he awards this cup. Big game this again. He doesn't need an injury. I think Jason's going to take it one step at a time, two feet at a time. We'll leave you now to enjoy the final presentation and the joy to be seen whenever a Subway All-Ireland Schools Cup winner is crowned. Final score here at the National Basketball Arena in the under 19 B girls final. Ulidia integrated 54. Loretto, Stevens Green, the champions on 69.